Hi, my name is Cindy Rang with the Fabric Patch in Efreda, Washington. You can find us at fabricpatch.net and we are going to talk about block number one in the Westport block of the month. Alright, so we are doing the Westport block of the month. Uh, this is a pattern by Whirly Gig Designs and you can see that there's either the king size version uh, which has a few more blocks or there's the twin size version. So you should either have the pattern or the kit or obviously both. Um, and you might have the kits that we've put together. We do have some that were um, their exact colors from Hoffman Fabrics or maybe you're doing something that is a little bit scrappy. For the one that we're doing for the series, we are doing scrappy blocks, but we're going to show you the fabrics that are in the kits if you happen to purchase a kit. All right, so let's go ahead and start with block number one. Okay, so let's take a look at our pattern again. What's really nice about her pattern is that she gives you this nice little color card for the blue colorway or one for the warmer colorway. And we talked about how to get started and how to collect all of your fabrics that you're going to use so that you knew which ones we were using where. So if you've collected your own and you have those set, or if you're using our kit, what you're going to notice is that in this block number one, we're using the background, we're using fabric number four, which is this light green in here, we're using fabric number five, which is going to be this outer pinwheel, and then this dark green, they're suggesting fabric number 11. Not to say that you couldn't do anything you want, but if you wanted something to have a little bit of a cohesive look, this is how they were using those fabrics. All right, so you should have your pattern that has all of your cutting directions. One little thing I'm gonna mention right up front is that if you do all of your pre-cutting, I want you to notice that she has these little coping squares. And they are all, or frames rather, and they are around every one of the blocks. And in the cutting directions for your background, she tells you the size to cut it and she suggests, I think it's an inch and a half wide to cut these. We've cut ours at two inches. The reason we've done that is because when you're putting blocks together, it's pretty imperative that all of these blocks come out the exact size that they're supposed to so that everything will fit in there perfectly. And you can see that little frame is what creates those that floating appearance in that block. So just in case something is a little bit off and um, our seam allowance is a little too small or our seam allowance is a little too big, what's really nice is to have that opportunity to be able to square up your block. And so what we've done is we've decided, and I might remember to mention this as we work through each of these blocks, but what we've decided to do is to cut these coping frame little borders, or I think she's calling them a block border. Instead of cutting these an inch and a half, we're cutting them two inches. So that after we've pressed everything and it's time to trim it down to the size it's supposed to be, we'll have that tiny little bit of insurance all the way around just in case we need it. So that's the only thing, the only adjustment that we've made to the cutting. All right, so when we have all of our cutting, what you're going to have is you're going to have your center squares that you've cut. You're going to have your squares that are going to be your inside swirl um, or pinwheel color, your outside pinwheel color, and then you'll have all of these rectangles. So then what's going to happen, and as you're following along with your pattern, what you'll see is she's going to tell you to take your rectangle and to take your square and doing right sides together, she's gonna to have you draw a line. And when you draw that little line, you're then going to sew right on top of that line. After you've sewn right on top of that line, you want to trim off a quarter inch. Now you can draw that if you want to, but I tend to just lay my ruler right down on the top of that. That way I can look, if I have to rip that out for some reason, I can do all of that before I've pre-cut. So I have all of that lined up on there and I'm just going to trim that off and then I'm gonna to go to the ironing board and I'm going to go ahead and press that. Pressing is as important as piecing. You have to make sure that you not only have the right seam allowance and you have accuracy in your cutting, but pressing is that, that third piece that's pretty critical. 
Okay, so for pressing, I do like a heavy iron, and I like best press or a starch. You set your seam, and then when you go in, I just like to roll that open so that my seam is flat. What's important is to make sure that there isn't anything left over in there. Because if you press that and you have that funny little, I'm just going to exaggerate that, but if you have a little lip there, that funny little amount will make a huge difference, not only when you've measured the finished block, but when you go to quilt it as well. All right, after you've done that, what's going to end up happening is you're going to end up making 12 out of the pinwheel that is color number five and you're going to make four that is this inside color number four. So you'll end up with these and we're ready to piece our very first pinwheel block. And this is pretty simple. This is just a little inset seam. So the way that you'll start this is is like this and you're going to turn this over and we're going to sew this seam about halfway down. After I've done that I actually am going to go ahead and press this open actually with my iron and I'm leaving that little bit unsewn. I'm going to come back and get that at the end. Then I'm going to go ahead and take my next piece, put it right here, put that over right sides together and I'm going to sew that seam. And then I will press that one open with my iron. And then I'll take my next one, lay it like this, right sides together, and I'm going to sew that seam. Then I'm going to press this one open. After I've pressed this one open, here is my last one, right sides together, and I'm going to sew that seam. Okay, that's my last one. I'm going to press this one open and then after I've pressed that open, I'm going to come back and finish this first seam that I started. And then give it a really good press. This is usually when I'll come back in again with my best press, get it kind of nice and crisp. And then the only trimming up that I tend to do when I have to piece all of these blocks together is I'm just going to get rid of some of those excess threads. Other than that, don't start going crazy with trimming a bunch of things up because it's not going to matter. We need to get this whole block together and then we'll be all right. So after you've made this one, you're going to repeat that and you're going to make four of them. And then you'll see how this goes together. And you can see all four are exactly the same. But then what will happen is you're just going to twist them and you end up with a block that looks like this. Now all I'm going to do is flip this over, sew that one together, flip this one over, sew that one together, and then sew them together across the end here to put these four blocks together. So these are sewed and just a little trick here is that when you just um, are chain piecing and you sew your first block, butt your next one up and sew your next one, you don't have to clip those apart because then it just gives you just a little reminder so that you don't flip something around and sew it onto a wrong end and you know that this is where you're going to flip this one up lock those seams in and those locked seams will look like this. And you're just going to lock those over so you have that perfect point in the center. Okay, this is an example of what I was talking about. I had pressed this from the other side and can you see up close that there's just can you see how much? It doesn't seem like very much. There was about maybe an eighth of an inch, maybe a sixteenth of an inch, but that will make a big difference in your block. So just make sure that all of those seams are pressed flat and pressed open. The other thing when you get your block done is, again, I am still only going to trim off my threads from sewing it together. I'm not going to go crazy and start trimming because what will happen is you can see that you've got a quarter of an inch here that you need for your seam allowance so that when you sew this together you end up on point. You'll have the same amount down here, 
same amount here. So if you start trimming things up because you think that something seems a little wonky, and sometimes it does, it's just because fabric can stretch just a little, it's a little bit fluid, it doesn't matter. Let it go because then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna trim off a little bit of thread and then we're gonna take our little borders, we're gonna sew our borders on the end and what will happen is this seam right here is going to create that illusion that it's nice and straight on this side. And what will happen is you're gonna put all of these blocks together with all of the other blocks and when it's all machine quilted, it's not going to be really flat anyway because of the texture of the quilting. So don't go crazy and don't start trimming a bunch of weird stuff off. So this is the part where, of course, she tells you the length for your top and your bottom and she's telling you inch and a half wide and I just want to remind you this is the part where we've done two inches wide instead. We're still doing the same length for everything, but on our side though, that's going to make that measurement different. So, so you'll just have to adjust for that and plan for that just a little bit so that your block is just a tiny bit bigger, just so you have that insurance in case you need it. All right, here is our finished block. Now, again, it is a tiny bit oversized from what it's supposed to be, but only by about a half an inch, which is just about right, because I'm gonna set this aside, and after we've done all of the other blocks, we will talk in a future class about how to square everything up to get it the exact size. But in the meantime, I have a few more blocks to make, because if you are doing the king size version, she wants you to make three of these blocks. If you're doing the twin size version, she wants you to make two. So we'll see you for your next block in two weeks. Thank you for watching our video. We invite you to leave a comment, hit the like button, or better yet, subscribe to our channel so you never miss an episode. You can also visit our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or Pinterest pages, or find all of those things and our online store at fabricpatch.net.